Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from GoMath. Today we're going to work on number 107 on the FTC K-6 through practice test. This is a great problem to review some core concepts in data analysis. So let's start. Which types of graphs or charts would be appropriate for displaying the information, the following information? And then it gives us this chart here. It has uh, information on uh, favorite sports of 50 survey middle school students. It gives the sports, and I guess the number of times the students voted for each one of those sports. And then it gives us options on how to display this information. We could either display this uh, chart in a bar graph, a pie chart, a scatter plot, or a broken line graph. So I'm going to talk about this and, and, and connect it to data analysis. Data analysis is a core idea on all the teacher certification exams. It doesn't matter if you're in Florida or Massachusetts or California, all the teacher certif certification exams are going to involve some sort of questions involving data analysis, statistics. And what it is, is you're going to be examining data and drawing inferences from it. Now, data is just another way of uh, referring to information. So here, the data that's uh, placed on this chart is the number of times uh, each sport is chosen. If we wanted a, another way to represent this data is to do a bar graph. A bar graph actually would be a really good way of comparing these different sports. And we'd set the bar graph up. I'd have my individual sports here. So I, I might start with a football. Let's say football's this one here. Certain amount of people. I guess this is a uh, 11 people like football. So this is this might be the sport on the x-axis, and on the y-axis is the number of students. I could see in the bar graph that 11 students like football. Well, what about basketball? That's our next group. Well, 13 like basketball, so that's a little higher up. And then let's jump down. Let's uh, jump to tennis here for a moment. What about tennis? Well, tennis, only five people, right? Tennis, there are only five people. There are 13 people for this one here for the uh, basketball. So based on the bar graph, what the bar graph allows me to do is draw inferences on the different sports. I can say, looks like it appears from the bar graph that basketball was the most popular. Or I might be able to say, well, basketball, you know, was almost three times, three times as many people like basketball than tennis. Or tennis, out of all of them, is the one that's the least popular. All right, so a bar graph could help me analyze this data and draw some inferences. Let's look at another way to, to uh, analyze this data. The second way would be a pie chart. Now, what is a pie chart? Pie charts are used to, uh, to show part-to-whole relationships. When we think about our whole here, the whole is 100% of your, of your pie chart. Or I used to say to teachers, it's 100% of your pizza pie, right? It's the whole pizza. So 100% is one whole, right? One whole is equal to 100%. And the different parts, if you add up all the parts of the pizza, they're going to add up to 100% of the pizza or one whole. So in our pie chart, we might have 13 for basketball, 11 for football, you know, another 11 here for, uh, um, for soccer, 10 here for uh, baseball, and 5 here for tennis. It shows the individual parts of the whole, and if we wanted to, we could say, well, 13 out of 50 students, because they're, um, or there's, uh, yeah, there's 50 students in total here if we added all these up. This would equal, you know, um, how many students, this would get me my percent per chance, that would, uh, um, or my decimal that would be equivalent to the number of students that liked um, this specific sport, basketball. So pie charts, really good to compare the part, all the different parts of a whole, and it leads us into part-to-whole relationships, fractions, decimals, and percents. All right? Very cool and very important that you see that with pie charts. So right now, one and two are actually the best ways to represent the information on this graph. 
I'll just point out why you know scatter plots wouldn't be uh, the best way to represent this information. A scatter plot really is used to um, see if there's a correlation between two data, two uh, factors. For example, if we were just examining um, um, the number of hours you study and your score on your test. Right? If we were examining these two factors that we could measure, your score, the number of hours that you studied, and the actual score on your test, people would fall in different areas. But in general, a scatter plot shows the relationship between the points, between two factors, pardon me. So in general, we're hoping to see a positive correlation here. Uh, the more hours that you study, the increase in the hours that you study would lead to an I a higher score. That would show a positive correlation between two factors. Um, a negative correlation would be um, something like this: the more you um, the more you spend, the less money you have on your in your savings account. And then sometimes with scatter plots, when examining two factors, you find that there's no correlation. So let's say we had a scatter plot like this, and we were examining the number of peanuts that you eat with your with your uh, with your test score. You know really it doesn't matter the number of peanuts you eat. You could eat a lot of peanuts or little peanuts. There's really no correlation between the number of peanuts you eat and your test score. Alright, so that's why you could eliminate this one right here. It's not relevant for this data. And this one right here, broken line graph. A broken line graph, it's used when you're when you're examining information and uh, some of the information, the data points are so large that they can't be represented on your graph. Um, or there's a, there's a domain or range that's so big that it's not going to be represented. So let's say we were looking at values here and we might have a break here because we might be going from 5, 15 to 30 and our break here might be like a thousand. So it's, it's a way to, um, you only use a broken line graph because you run out of room in the way to represent the information. And it's a way to, um, to adjust for that break in information. All right, don't worry so much about this one right now. Just focus on these top three. Make sure you know these, um, how to uh, interpret bar graphs, a way of comparing things. Pie charts, a way of looking at the partial relationships of things and also comparing them. And scatter plots, a way of comparing two factors and seeing if there are positive and negative correlations. All right, team, this is Chris Abraham from GoMath. Hope you found this video helpful, reviewing some uh, core concepts and data analysis for your teacher certification exams. Okay, team, have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye. Hi team, I want to encourage all teachers that need some extra help on the math to check out one of the Go Math workshops. We're holding them in Massachusetts and in Florida to help teachers uh, get ready for the teacher certification exams. Check it out. I'm sure you'll find it very helpful.